Om Namo and I welcome back. So we are working through a dialogue with Maricha and Ravana. Ravana has come to Maricha saying, will you help me kick the ass of Rama? And Maricha is going, yeah, no. <laughs> so his talk to Ravana continues in both the chapters we're reading today, 38 and 39. Chapter 38 is called Maricha's Narration, Interaction with Rama. Maricha says, Once upon a time, I, who was like a blue rich cloud, wearing ear globes made of pure gold, wearing a crown, and holding an iron bar as a weapon, with valor comparable to a mountain, possessing the strength of one thousand elephants, was wandering in the Danka forest, creating great fear in the mind of people and eating the flesh of ascetics. At that time, the soul of Dharma, a great sage called Viswamitra, was frightened of me, and went to King Dasartha and spoke to him. He said, O King, due to an asura called Maricha, great fear has risen in my mind, and so please send Rama to protect us during the time of the Yagna. When that soul of Dharma requested like this to the king, he replied to the great sage in the following way, My son Raghava is only twelve years old and is not experienced in the use of arrows, and if you desire so, I will come to help you with my army. O oh, great among sages, with the help of my great army, which has four divisions, I would kill the Rakshasas, whom you consider to be enemies. When told like this, that great sage said to King Dasartha, Nobody in the world except Rama is a match to the great Rakshasa. O oh, king, you have protected even devas in war, and the acts of war you participated in are famous in all the three worlds. O oh, destroyer of enemies, I desire that your great army stays here. Though he is only a child, Rama is very capable, and greatly lustrous, and capable of killing my enemies. After telling like this, Viswamitra took Sita to his hermitage. After telling like this, Viswamitra took Rama, though only a child, to his hermitage. Then in the Danda Karanya, Viswamitra took the vows to perform the yagna, and there Rama stood in guard, holding his bow, which was kept ready. That Rama, who was beardless, having lotus petal-like eyes, clad in a nice single garment, holding a bow, having knotted hair, and wearing a luminous gold chain, and by his luster spread light in the Dadanga forest, he looked like a full moon that had just risen. At that time, me, looking like a huge dark cloud, wearing bright golden ear globes, who was strong and blessed with many boons, arrived at that hermitage. As soon as I arrived, raising my weapons, I entered that place, but I was seen by Rama without any fear, and he started to string the arrow to his bow. Without knowing it, I thought that I was much more powerful than this boy, <laughs> and so I entered quickly to the place where Viswamitra's yagna was in process. Then an arrow was released by Rama, and it struck me, and I was thrown to a sea at a distance of a hundred yagnas away. Due to his desire for not killing me, that valorous one tried to protect me by throwing me away, and I fell there unconscious. I was thrown far away in the sea water, and after a long time gained consciousness and went back to the city of Lanka. By Rama, who had not completed his studies in archery, and who could complete any work easily, I was spared that way. But those who came to help me were destroyed. Oh, Ravana, in spite of being prevented by me, if you enter into conflict with Rama, you will soon face great danger. You will bring great sorrow to the Rakshasas who are experts in the sport of love and who celebrate festivals together as a community. You will ruin the city of Lanka, filled with magnificent royal mansions and decorated by varied types of gems, by taking the princess of Mithila Sita there. Though you do not sin, by mixing in the company of sinners, you would be destroyed like a fish in the company of a large number of snakes. 
By your defects, you will make the Rashasas who apply divine sandalwood on their bodies and who decorate themselves with divine ornaments to be killed and lie on the bare earth. You will see that after Rama slays Rakshasas, remaining ones either in the company of wives or their wives being abducted, with no one to look after them, would flee in all ten directions. Without any doubt, you would see Lanka with burning buildings, filled with a net of arrows and surrounded by flames of fire. There is no greater sin than sexual dalliance with the wives of other people, though you are married to one thousand pretty women. So please get engaged only with your wives, so that you can protect your clan, prestige, prosperity, and kingdom, and also your life. If you wish to enjoy your life for a long time and a greater measure with peaceful wives as well as peaceful friends, please do not offend Rama. In spite of the sincere warning from an earnest friend, myself, if you forcefully violate Sita, your life will be pulled out by the arrows of Rama and the power among relations gets reduced and you will go to the land of Yama. Thus ends chapter 38. Chapter 39 is called Maricha's narration, Encounter with Rama. In that clash with him, I had been somehow released. Please hear what happened recently, which does not have any remedy. I, along with two Rakshasas, without any worry on my part, taking the form of a deer, entered the Dadanka forest. I took the form of a huge deer with a shining tongue, a big body, sharp teeth, and with great strength, and I was wandering in Dandankya forest, eating flesh. In that dreadful form, I wandered in places with sacrificial fires, near sacred waters, near hermitages, and near big fig trees, torturing the sages. I was killing sages who followed Dharma, drinking their blood, and eating their flesh, and I wandered all over doing that. I, who was one who ate the flesh of the sages, and one who hates Dharma, I was intoxicated by drinking the blood, and I behaved very cruelly with those who wandered in the forest. There again, <laughs> I encountered Rama, the follower of Dharma, Sita, and the very strong Lakshmana, who is also a great warrior. Ignoring Rama, who was a sage, eating restricted food, acting for the welfare of all beings, and who was very strong, I, who had gone to the forest, thinking that he is only an aesthetic, and also remembering the old enmity in the form of the deer, ran towards him with great anger in the form of a deer, and pointing at him with my sharp horns, and forgetting his strike at me in the past. He then drew his great bow, producing the sound of the whiz of Garuda, and released three sharp arrows at me. Those three arrows with strong bends, all equal to the Vajrayuda, which were well targeted, came for eating my blood. I, being wicked, remembering about his earlier great valor, and being scared, in a bewildered state, ran away, while the two Rakshasas with me were killed. After saving myself from the arrows of Rama, somehow I got out alive, and now being composed in my mind, having started to live the life of an aesthetic who has given up everything. In all trees I am seeing him dressed in deerskin and bark, holding a bow, looking like the god of death with his noose. Due to fear, I see thousands of Rama, and it appears to me that the entire forest is filled with the form of Rama. Even when I am alone... I see only Rama, and seeing Rama in my dream, I reel and become senseless. Any word, starting with Ra, frightens me. Even the name Radha creates fear in me. Knowing his great power, Ravana, it is not proper for you to wage a war against him, for that son of the Ragu clan can kill even great Rakshasas like Bali and Namuchi. There are many people who strictly follow Dharma, but due to the mistake of others, they are destroyed along with their family. Like that, I am going to be destroyed because of your mistakes. So do whatever you think is proper, but I am not going to follow you. Rama has great luster, great power, and great strength. Would he become the god of death of the world of Rakshasas? <laughs> due to Sorpanak, 
Kara came from Shanastana, and before he exceeded his limits, he was killed by Rama, who can achieve anything. So please tell me sincerely in what way Rama exceeded his limits. Oh, Ravana, I have spoken these words aiming at the welfare of our relatives, and if you do not follow the words spoken by me, you along with our relations will perish in the war by Rama's arrows, which move straight and hit their target. Thus ends chapter 39 and Maricha's narration of his life-changing encounter with Rama. So, a uh, very, very interesting story. Very interesting story. Even this eater of flesh realizes when it's a losing battle. It's like, no, we're not going to do that. Thank you, as always, for joining me. That was a very enjoyable part to read. I really like that. I like this character and his wisdom. This bad guy who's actually got a few brains. And, um... Very enjoyable. So until next time, thank you as always. Jai Shri Krishna.